In my last video, I showed how the orthographic view correctly explains how the observer sees perspective. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the flat earth perspective view. This will be Brian's logic trying to explain why he thinks the sun can set due to perspective. Now, Brian's using GeoGebra for his demonstration, and you think it would have given him an aha moment as to how perspective actually works, because the program actually calculates the angular size of the sun above the horizon for him. The sun moves, it appears, to, for the observer to get closer to the earth. But it's not actually, like, where it's, that's not actually happening. What's actually happening is this. The angle is changing, but Obviously, we don't have the perspective here, um, but if we did have the perspective, the uh, the sun would appear to be at 45 degrees, would appear to be more down here. So, sorry, if that's, uh, if that's at 45, whatever I'll be uh, back at 45. So, let's say this is 45 degrees. Uh, in If this was for the observer, the sun would appear to be here at this point. So does Brian really think that this is not where the observed sun would be up here and he's going to move it down here? Put it there. Right. Right. And I don't know. There it is. So uh, color this orange as well. Sorry. Color that orange. Right. So that would be 45 degrees. To the, to the observer, that's where they would think they're seeing the sun above the horizon. Like it would be more closer to that or maybe further down. And flat earthers wonder why we accuse them of not understanding how perspective works. Now, Brian got quite a bit of grief in the comments from the GLOBE community for that video. So a few days later, he put out this video to explain it in a slightly different way. So in my last video, I showed the demonstration of when the sun that moves above us, right? It moves along at a constant altitude above the surface of Earth. So that's the sky, this is the Earth. Now, we don't view it doing that because we have perspective. But what we view it doing is when it moves, right, we view this happening, right? So if the, if the sun is getting higher, or, 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 sorry, coming towards solar noon, we uh, view this happening, right? So it appears to be getting higher in the sky. If it's going towards the evening time, we view this happening. It appears to be getting, appears to be getting lower in the sky. So what part of Brian doesn't understand that both of these suns appear to be the exact same elevation above the horizon? This would be true for any sun along that line of sight. I mean, you have to wonder, does he understand that these angular measurements are the apparent or perspective view? Now, on one hand, there's nothing wrong with using a line like this to show the change in perspective. I have used this graphic to show that this second pole here appears to be half the size of the first pole. The third pole appears to be a third of the size of the first pole. And of course, the fourth pole only appears to be a quarter of the size because we know there is a pattern to how perspective works. But as I'm going to show you, this actually demonstrates the flaw behind Brian's logic. Now, using this method is not new. Here's a video from P-Brain that goes back to 2015. Now, when you watch it, it actually seems like it could make sense. But this is because it's done over a very short distance, so it looks like the sun is moving at a constant speed as it goes up and over you. But watch what happens when I extend this out. Now I moved the sun the exact same distance up here, but you can see from your perspective down here that they appear to be getting closer, which means that the sun would also appear to be slowing down as it got closer to the horizon. So let's make this a little more realistic. Many flat earthers claim the sun's about 3,000 miles high, which is this line here. I have spaced these suns at 1,000 miles apart, and to get an idea of the scale of distance, we have the North Pole here, the equator here, and the ice wall, which would be about 11,000 miles away. And we can't forget about Brian's perspective sun path. But look what happens when we add perspective suns along that line. Down here, they are getting so close, they're barely even moving, and we're still quite a ways above the horizon. And an angular size calculation shows that the sun that is 12,000 miles away is still just over 14 degrees above the horizon. So this is why they will show this. 
and why they want to ignore this. Which is kind of funny because they always use a row of street lights angling down to the horizon as evidence that yes, the sun does set due to perspective. And the suns here getting closer as they get farther away matches exactly what we see in this photograph. But flat earthers need to ignore the big problem. We don't see the sun doing this. This is what we see the sun doing, moving at a constant speed every hour. And any flat earther can test this by using their P900 and taking a 50 minute time lapse like I did as I show here. Here's the second time lapse and as you can see the sun has moved the same distance across the sky. And to be honest, it only takes a little common sense to understand that that sun is going to continue on that same path below the horizon. So let's listen to Brian again. So if the sun is 27 miles high, right? Let's just say, I don't know if it is. I can't claim it is because I don't know. Brian, a 27 mile high sun. I mean, let's be honest, you have not given this any thought at all. Here's an example of how ridiculous that is. I live in Bangkok, which is between the Tropic of Cancer and the Equator, so twice a year the sun is directly overhead. That last happened on August 17th. Here is the solar noon time of 1222, of course the sun altitude at 90 degrees. And now I'm going to move the sun until it gets down to 45 degrees. That's a little over three hours later at 3.29. So here's the sun at zenith. Again, the solar noon time was 12.22. And a little over three hours later, the sun was at 45 degrees above the horizon. So this would mean that the sun only moved 27 miles in three hours. Brian, do you really think that's reality? Here's another example of how ridiculous that 27 mile high sun is. And this is based on the claim by many flat earthers that the diameter of the sun is about 30 miles. Now this would certainly be quite a bit bigger than the actual observed size of the sun, which is about 0 0.53 degrees in angular size. So let's use this formula with that angular size of 0 0.53 degrees to see exactly how big that 27 mile high sun would be. And when you plug in the numbers and do the calculation, one quarter mile. That's only 1,320 feet in diameter. And if you want to put that into perspective, here would be the size of that sun compared to the Empire State Building in New York. To be honest, I think a sun that small would bring on the next ice age. But let's continue with Brian. Right. Then when we move it along the track here, and we move it out, to way out and make it smaller to bear with me now when I'm doing this way out and way out to 6,214 um, miles or just just 210 so if we move it all the way out as far as I can go right it's about it down now right holding the same altitude above the surface of earth Treating the earth and the sky as uh, parallels, we have an angle of north that's 0 0.24. So, if we measure that angle to the center of the sun, that means that the sun would just be touching the horizon at 6,214 miles. And like many of you, you always have to wonder why flat earthers have never asked the question that if the angle between the sun and the horizon decreases to nothing, then why doesn't the smaller angular size of the sun also change? But again, they always wonder why we accuse them of not understanding how perspective works. Now again, if we had a flat earth sun that was 3,000 miles high at a distance of 12,000 miles, it would still be 14.04 degrees above the horizon. Now Brian's 27 mile high sun was over 6,000 miles away to be 0 0.25 degrees above the horizon. So let's use this trig formula to see how far away a 3,000 mile sun would be. Well, that's well over half a million miles. 
And Brian, all I can say is you have literally debunked yourself because your method is actually evidence that the flatter sun doesn't work. But let's have one more listen to Brian. Now, let's just say it's not at 27. Let's just say it's at 18. Wow, he even made the sun lower. When you watch Flat Earth videos like this, you really have to wonder what is going on in their minds. I mean, first of all, understanding how perspective works really is not that difficult, especially when you have a program like GeoGebra to help you.